And now I'd like to call up uh, this year's valedictorian to offer her farewell remarks to the class of 2012, Leanne Lang. When I first found out that I was going to give this speech today, I was terrified. I'm still terrified, as a matter of fact. I had absolutely no idea what to say, so for inspiration, I looked back to my sister Mai's valedictory speech two years ago, and I found that I could not remember a single thing she said, and neither could my parents. So I proceed on the assumption that no one will actually remember anything I say today, which is quite a relief. But just in case you do remember something I say, I don't want to subject you all to a bunch of tired cliches or endless reflections about my own short life or my time at Xavier. I would rather share with you something that's been incredibly helpful to me in the last few months. So instead, I'm going to talk about a man named Dan Gilbert and about unexpected happiness. Dan Gilbert studies happiness, and he's found that there are really two kinds. The first is the kind that we feel when we get exactly what we want. This kind of happiness comes from getting into your number one college, finding your perfect roommate, getting a raise at work, etc. He calls this natural happiness. The other kind of happiness, however, is much more complicated and interesting. This kind of happiness comes about when we don't get what we want, but in the end, we're happy anyways. In other words, we make our own happiness. He calls it synthetic happiness. For example, this is Pete Best saying, I'm happier than I would have been with the Beatles in 1994, 32 years after being replaced by Pete Best. Now, of course, you're probably just saying, he's just saying that because he didn't get the job. But that's like exactly the point of synthetic happiness, that we can be just as happy without getting what we want. I mean, look at your teachers. I doubt that any of them ever dreamed of getting a job in the Coachella Valley of all places. <laughs> Imagined, yet they found happiness here. Our culture, though, puts natural happiness on a pedestal and tends to deem synthetic happiness somehow less worthy or less meaningful, which is really quite a shame. That's not to put down natural happiness. Of course, we'd rather have some things happen than others. That's why we stress and we worry and we get angry and frustrated. But it's not as big of a deal as we like to think it is. Research shows that for almost anything that happens to you, Give it three months and you won't care anymore. You just really won't care, it won't matter to you anymore. So for those of you who are suffering silently through the speech, be consoled by the fact that in three months you'll most likely not remember or care about a single thing I'm saying. <laughs> Terrible speeches aside, what about truly serious and life-changing events? I think if given the choice, every person here today would rather win the lottery than become a paraplegic. Instant wealth versus the loss of one's legs. I mean, duh, it's an easy choice, right? Obviously, the paraplegics would be, un would be unhappy with their luck of the draw, and rightly so. And the lottery winners would be pretty ungrateful to not be deliriously happy with their lives. At least, that's what we think. But a study conducted on lottery winners and paraplegics found that a year after their life-changing incidents, their happiness levels hadn't changed whatsoever. There was no significant change in their happiness, so winning the lottery didn't make people happier, and losing the use of their legs didn't make people any less happy when some time had passed. So what's all the point of this, you're probably asking. The point is that we each get to choose whether we will be happy or not. This sounds simple, but it's really revolutionary. So much of our attitudes in high school are based off of natural happiness and whether everything is going exactly the way we wanted it to. And we think that we'll be happy in the future only if we find the perfect school where we study the perfect major to get the perfect job and someday the perfect family. I know I did. But by thinking that, we, we cheat ourselves out of so much because the truth is that we can choose to be happy regardless of what's going on in our lives. And that is so important because as we keep going out into the wider world, and as most of us have already discovered to some extent, Things aren't always going to work out. I know that I always felt like if I worked hard enough, 
everything would be okay and I'd get what I wanted. And then this year I got quite a wake-up call. On March 31st this year, I got the proverbial dreaded skinny envelope, a waitlist letter from a college. I brushed it off, but little did I know that it was going to be only the first of many. I applied to nine colleges, I was flat out rejected by two, waitlisted at six, and accepted at only one. Thank you, Vanderbilt, you'll always have a place in my heart. <laughs> Needless to say, it was pretty stressful. The waiting and not knowing was the worst part. Yet as the waitlist and rejection letters kept coming, I realized that I didn't have to let these colleges tell me whether I was going to be happy or not. I decided that forget it, I was going to be happy, and the colleges could go, well, I'm not going to pretend that this decision was not influenced in some part by anger or resentment, but it soon took on a life of its own far beyond that. The difference was incredible. Of course I still cared about what happened, but not in the same way. I was able to see all the blessings I had that were just waiting for a bad situation to show themselves. I got to experience the incredible support of my family, friends, teachers, and of the Xavier community as a whole. I learned to see myself in a different way. And I took some time to really reflect on who I am and what I want in life. I would have never been able to see or learn or experience any of these things without a situation that was exactly the opposite of anything I would have ever asked for. As some of you have heard, the situation ended up working out and my plans have changed again, but I'm still so glad that I had this experience. Even though it was stressful and frustrating, I'm grateful for it because above all, I learned that I can be happy even when everything goes wrong. And that's what I want to tell you today. Synthesized happiness is real and it's lasting, just as much as natural happiness. Your future world will be determined by your attitude. You can choose to make a bad situation a great one, or you can choose to make a great situation a terrible one. Like the paraplegics and the lottery winners, it won't be your outer circumstances, but your attitude that shapes your life. Happiness is your choice. Like that great modern poet Drake says, when a good thing goes bad, it's not the end of the world, it's just the end of a world. Words to live by, guys. Choose to be happy. Don't be blinded or derailed by the bad stuff. Choose to see the good stuff. It's like Xavier, when you focus on how horribly ugly the paint in the upstairs hallway is, you miss out on how pretty the rest of the school is. <laughs> and this is where I might start slipping into the cliches I promised I'd avoid, but I'll keep it short. We all think we know what will make us happy, and most of us have our dream lives completely planned out already. But if synthesized happiness is real, and it is, you can be happy no matter where you end up. So be open to new possibilities, even when they're disguised as failures or disappointments. Because someday, your plan B might just become your plan A. Things won't always go as you'd imagine or as you'd wish. I know for me, they didn't. But they don't have to for you to be really and truly happy. Nietzsche famously said that what doesn't kill us makes us stronger. Well, it might just make us happier, too. That brings us to the end. I'm so lucky to have known each and every one of you, and I want to thank you for being such great classmates and friends, and also for making it through the speech. I wish we could have just a few more days or hours together as Xavier students, but it's time to let go and say goodbye. I hope that if you remember one thing I've said, it's that you yourself make the choice to be happy, to live, to love the life that you live, or to not. I wish each and every one of you the most incredible happiness today and in the future. Thank you and congratulations, class of 2005. so much, Leanne. Just want to offer a few thank yous. There are so many people that uh, need to be thanked to put on an event like this. And I apologize in advance. Anyone that I